Did I just see... Garo? Madhouse. You're cock teasing right now, like straight up. You rarely do season twos, and you give me... You give me a couple seconds of Garo, like... What? Like, I I'm gonna say right now, anime only. See, I know you probably don't understand. Like, you're probably saying, like, wait, who's Garo and stuff? But... Garo... Uh, this is th the simplest way I can put it. Garo is... What's currently going on in the manga. That that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. I, I just did not expect to see Garo... Shown in the anime. Of all things, we got to see, like, a visual. An animated version, slight animated version of Garo. When I saw that scene in this episode towards the beginning, I'm like, whoa, Madhouse! Like, are you trying to let us know that you plan on doing a season two? Now, I'm gonna say... I highly doubt we're going to get a season 2 for a while now, because right now the new updated version of One Punch Man is not done with Garo's arc at the moment. So there's a lot of content that needs to come out before we get probably a season 2 of One Punch Man. I would say if we were to get a season 2 of One Punch Man, it'd probably come out maybe late 2016. But that is just my viewpoint on that. But still, I feel like Madhouse is potentially teasing a season two of One Punch Man because the way they animated that scene with Garo, that was just fucking brilliant. That that was really brilliant. When I saw him like Damn, damn, the epicness that would happen in that arc if it was animated. Like, oh my god. I you know what'd be epic? If Madhouse in season one of One Punch Man and they give us like a quick glimpse, like a teaser of the next arc. I'd be so fucking excited if something like that happened. I would be so excited. But, Garo was a quick moment in this episode, and that's not really what I entirely want to focus on. I'm just letting you know, anime onlys, if there ever is a season 2, or if you ever want to pick up the manga, Garo is a motherfucking beast. It's just like, holy shit. So, let's get into this episode. For one, this episode, I have to say, is probably... I say this a lot, but this episode is my personal favorite. Like, it, they continuously get better and better by the week. Like, these episodes just have so much meaning to it that it makes you just dive into the series. You're like, oh my god, how can One Punch Man be this damn good? Because there was a lot of meaning behind this episode that some might actually have missed. Because for one, I want to point out, was how we had it to where... We had this, like, premonition that some form of villain was coming to Earth. Like, the Earth is in trouble. And with that, that was kind of like a parody of training arcs. Like, let me explain. Let's take an example of the Android Saga from Dragon Ball Z. You remember where Trunks came back from the future and he's like, I'm here to warn you that, you know, androids are going to be appearing in a couple of years. You need to train because they're stronger than Frieza. Well, you remember how that was done, that was set up? That's kind of how this was done. It was like, hey, there is a villain coming, a very strong threat coming very soon and you guys need to really prep yourself and have some training because you're probably not prepared for it all of a sudden the threat comes in and just starts fucking demolishing the city there wasn't even time to train and this right here shits on training arcs that's kind of exactly what this was for because like they didn't have time to prepare they didn't have time to prepare for the villains coming in maybe in a couple months time couple days two years they had to instantly just start fighting like as soon as they heard the premonition they're like oh shit we gotta start fighting now because that freaking threat is here so that's funny I, I wonder how many actually understood that underlying meaning in this episode when it came to making fun of training arcs or prepping up for the next arc of a series so now that I said that let's get into the details at the beginning we get the introduction of tornado now technically we already got introduced to tornado a couple episodes back but I mean this is our first time we really get to see tornado in action I mean we get to see her powers displayed and we get to see this creature Awaken that is like the king of the dinosaurs. He's like I am awake and the sea king is finally dead I could finally come out of my hole and come annihilate and reign over the planet And all of a sudden you have it to where this s-class hero comes in which is tornado and demolishes this dinosaur king Which is pretty damn funny because I know many didn't think that s-class heroes were that strong because I mean Some I saw in the comments last week were actually saying s-class might not be that strong because of what happened to pretty pretty prisoner And also what happened to other other S classes or what we've seen displayed so far many were saying maybe S classes aren't that strong but what we saw in this episode kind of says differently because for one he saw to where tornado drug this meteor from space down and hit this damn dinosaur that was just priceless that was so fucking priceless the way he was annihilated and you just see his corpse in the ground in a crater pretty funny 
So yeah, I want to ask, now how did everybody feel about that introduction of Tornado? Since we technically already were introduced to her, but this time we actually get to see her personality, her character, and also what kind of person we should expect from her in the future. Now, I I'm curious, like, how do you all feel about her style, of the way she fights, and also how do you feel about how her attitude was with Saitama and other characters throughout this entire episode. I'm just, I want to hear Anime Only's thoughts, because I know there's probably going to be different opinions, but I just want to hear it. Now, besides that, moving on, we go into the part to where there is Silver Fang, he is giving, like, this lesson to Saitama and Genos, and he's like, hey, here's my move, this is how you do it, if you want to learn it, you're quick learners, you could possibly do this, and the outdoor Saitama and Genos are like, nah, we have no interest in your techniques, we're not here to do anything like this, and all of a sudden you have this, like, disciple of Silver Fang come in, and it's like, hey, you should respect Silver Fang, he's an S-class hero, and all of a sudden Sil Silver Fang's like, shut the fuck up, man. Like, seriously, Saitama is, like, a many times stronger than me, which goes to show you how much we should all respect this old man, because, let's think about this. From what we have seen from One Punch Man thus far, from everybody, like, normal heroes, C-class heroes, B-class heroes, a lot of S-class heroes, and A-class heroes, a bunch of them think that Saitama isn't strong, or he's a fraud. Many think that, and seeing how Silver Fang was able to understand that Saitama isn't a fraud, that he's actually very strong-willed in the mind and physically, it's really cool, because Silver Fang's like, yeah, he, he's many times stronger than me. I mean, look at the rank Silver Fang was in the S-Class Heroes. He's pretty damn high up there, and when you see it now, how he's like, hey, he's many times stronger than me, in the near future, he's probably gonna be above us, he's gonna be atop of the S-Class, that right there just makes my respect level for Silver Fang just up and at all time high just hearing something like that because that is the respect Saitama fucking deserves because he's been getting shit on by everybody around him by the public, civilians, other heroes it's just, it's fucked up and I'm glad that at the very least someone that is very strong can respect Saitama for who he is now the other S-Class heroes get introduced in this episode we get to see like the entire cast besides like one and for one that we need to look at is like the designs the designs of these S-Class heroes are fucking brilliant I've said this before, I've talked about Saitama's design, how he's very simplistic because he's supposed to be like that to make fun of the main characters in Shonen. But let's actually look at these character designs of these other guys. I mean, all these S-Class heroes look fucking awesome. Anime only. what is your favorite S-Class hero so far from what you've seen? I'm gonna tell you right now, I, I feel like many of you are gonna become king lovers once, you know, we get more characterization for king. I, I can already see so many Chibits loving fucking king. I can see it already, because when I saw king this episode, I'm like, yo, the fucking hype! Uh, like, when you saw king and you hear that heartbeat, I'm like, oh my god, madhouse, yes, yes, that's what I want to hear, that's what I want to fucking hear, and you just see king just sitting there giving his analysis on the situation, what they should do, oh yes, and oh yeah, I want to point out one thing, if you did not actually catch the dialogue in this episode, it was said that all the S-class heroes pretty much respect king. They respect him quite a bit. He's like one of the strongest men on the planet. And so with that, we know King is probably very powerful. And so I'm just going to tell you right now, his character, just just get ready. Just get, just get fucking ready. It, it, it's so funny. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for that hype. Oh yeah. So back into other details. Let's talk about the threat. The threat that is coming to the planet. So we had a premonition by this old woman that was looking at a crystal ball and says like, oh, there is trouble coming to Earth. And her premonitions are usually always 100% accurate. And she's predicted many uh, catastrophic events in the past and she's had to tell the Hero Association to be able to save them and, you know, that's what saved the day. And with her kind of dying, her final words were like, the Earth is in trouble, and she's never used the word trouble, so that just goes to show you the threat level of this. And in the episode, it is implied that the threat level of Boros that's currently coming to Earth is god level, because you have it to where the Hero Association is like, it's definitely dragon level, but there is a possibility that it is god level, and that is scary in of itself, that is very fucking scary, because we already recently got clarification to the different rankings of, you know, threat levels, like demon, dragon, and I mean, when we see this type of stuff, like a god level, you're like, oh my, this is pretty damn scary, so with that, 
you have it to where this just ups the stakes. That's how strong this person is. And of course, this person has a brilliant introduction. Boros and his introduction with his spaceship coming from outer space, and you just see the entire town obliterated in a second. It, it's pretty funny because, for one, you have it to where these bird people, they're, they're just coming in trying to attack the Hero Association building, and all of a sudden you think they're the ones that's causing the havoc, and all of a sudden they just get annihilated by this, like, creature behind them, and it has... Merylum's voice actor. If I am correct, that is Merylum voice acting that dude in this episode. You know, the guy that split into different bodies. I can't remember his name for some reason. It's been a while. But I, I feel like that is Merylum's voice actor. And that right there instantly makes this episode 10 out of 10 for me. Just the voice actor alone. I love Merylum's voice actor. And when I heard that voice on him, I'm like, yo, that hype right there. That's fucking epic. And so when I heard that, I'm like, th this couldn't be any better. Just that th it could not be any better when you heard that voice actor and when you saw how the fighting was going when he was regenerating and getting back up. Pretty cool stuff right there. Now, one thing I want to point out before I go any further with talking about the fret level to talking about what Saitama is doing or anything like that, let's look at what this arc entirely means. Because I know anime onlys are going to be questioning, like, what is the main point? Because usually arcs in One Punch Man actually do have some meaning to it, and just the best way to simplify this arc is to say that this is equivalent to, let's say, a Dragon Ball Z arc. Now, I'm not saying exactly like Dragon Ball Z, I'm just saying, like, this is like a parody of a Dragon Ball Z arc, like the power level standpoint. That, that's the that's the best way to put it, okay? That is the best way, because we already see examples of this in this episode because of the re regen of the villain, one of the main bad guys in this episode, how he was able to regen constantly after any damage he was taking, and this is kind of something you can link to, let's say, Majin Buu from Dragon Ball Z, and so that's kind of what this arc is making fun of or trying to imply. It's like a on the level of Dragon Ball Z in terms of stuff like that. Now that I've said that, let's move back into the other stuff to talk about. For one, we have it to where Saitama, he just busts through this roof that's been specially made to survive like fallouts and this survived an explosion from Boros's ship. That just goes to show you how strong Saitama is as well because let's point this out once again. This ship comes in obliterates the town, but the skyscraper where the heroes are, it, it's left standing. It's not even damaged. And Saitama just breaks through it like it's nothing. That goes to show you that Saitama was stronger than their fucking bullet that obliterated the entire town. GG. So he goes, he dodges bullets, and he starts punching bullets. He's like, get back and leave my planet. Just fucking punches that bullet back. And you just see him wrecking havoc inside of this ship, killing people. And you have this, like, dude introduce himself to Saitama. He's like, I have acid. I will melt you. And his just head flies off. Ah. <sighs> Can never have enough Saitama just wrecking bitches. So... As Saitama is just destroying throughout the entire ship, he's like, hey, where's the boss? Should the boss be, you know, appearing anytime soon? Which is very funny because Saitama is going out of his way to just cause havoc. Like, he, he's just destroying the ship, just punching the ship constantly. He's like, when's the boss going to appear? Like, he, he's just trying to make so much noise that the uh, boss appears in front of him where he could fight him. Which is very funny because one of the dialogue lines that Saitama says, he says like, oh, maybe the boss is already dead because we know how Saitama is. I mean, he kills him so fast, it's like one punch and they're done. So when you hear Saitama say maybe he's already dead after all these punches, I couldn't help but chuckle because... The Boros hype, it, it, it's too funny, because that final scene where you saw the one-eyed Cyclops, which is Boros, I'm just going to clarify, that is Boros. When you see him pop up, and you saw the hair, the pink hair, oh my god, the pink hair! I, I, I never in a million years expected Boros to have pink hair, of all things. Pink fucking... It's not bad, it's not a bad design, but pink hair? Okay, I mean, hey, Majin Buu is pink, I mean, Cell is gr solid green, and Frieza... I don't even know what Frieza is, so, I mean, let, let's just... Yeah, I I'm not even going to look at it. So, Boros in his design, pretty damn beast. I mean, he's just sitting in his throne, and you see the way he looks. GG. So, I mean, that's about it. I mean, this episode of One Punch Man, <sighs> the best way to put it, it it's just too good. It it's way too good. It's unfair how good this series is. It's way too unfair. And hopefully Madhouse is not cock-teasing. Like, hopefully they're not just cock-teasing and then they're not gonna do a season two because that Garo tease at the beginning of this episode was just too much for me. Like, I almost had a mini heart attack when I saw it. I was like, no way! You know what would be cool? Uh, it would be really cool if we had it to where Madhouse announces. Like, let's say, you know, the Boros arc 
finally officially ends after like 12 to 13 episodes. And it would be really cool if Madhouse came out and said like, hey, we're continuing on. We're going to make another season. It would be really cool if they did that because there is anime series that do that. Like different anime companies do that. Like when a series is doing well, they'll like usually say, okay, we're going to add more episodes to this. We're going to continue doing it, which would be pretty brilliant if, you know, One Punch Man got that type of treatment. Like, I, I don't think there is enough content to make a season two. But, I mean, if for somehow or some reason, if maybe Madhouse could contact the artist that's currently reworking One Punch Man and be able to kind of, like, write the story, I'd be pretty happy about that. But th that's left for another day, another discussion. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or not, wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.